to fight against Lone Nord. So that's the political parties according to the view that I understand. That is my personal view. Judge Lavergne, you probably have heard about uh, the National Front of, Camp Union, Nas of National Union Front of Kampuchea and of uh, the uh, Popular Armed Forces for the National Liberation of Kampuchea. What did these armed for? Uh, these four armed forces were they composed of Khmer Rouge battalions, or were they battalions uh, made up of Sayanuk, Sayanukis soldiers, or was it an army that was entirely controlled by the Khmer Rouge? The accused, Joanna. My understanding on the army was limited, so I try to explain according to what I understand. In 1968, it was the year the Khmer Rouge started its war, its revolutionary war. The 18th of January, 1968, the Communist Party of Kampuchea assigned Rohnims to strike in Baitamap. It was the 18th, not the 17th. And later it was changed to the 17th because Pol Pot saw it was overlapping with the 18th of March. 18th January was a starting day. In the northwest, they used P. P. Yaps Mountain as the base. In the southwest, there is a zone secretary, Ma Mong. He used Aural base. He used Aural Mountain as its base. At the War Mountain was Tamok. He used the War Mountain as his base for the, his struggling. And for Kai Pok and Koi Thun, they used Prey Long and Prey Sang Jungles as their base. And Pol Pot in 1968, he was at the Liberated Zone in Northeast area in Rotanakiri. That's what Lonol said during an interview or press statement. The land was about the size of the Kampong Chenang province, so the armies created was established in a militia form. And let me clarify that the militia war was the second stage. The first stage was a secret movement. It was since 1966 that was in a document, in a confession. They trained the people by having their own militia group. And when the people were upset with Lun Nord and to protect Sihanouk, then Pol Pot fetched up those forces for his own use. And from the beginning, from what I can recall, there was only a company, not even a battalion. And then the forces kept increasing, and the victory of on the Royal Armed Forces of the Lunol regime was due to Vietnam's support, who based their uh, their base near Ton Le Sap to fish. And at that time, they took the opportunity to strike and to gain power in Kampuchea. As I said, in Saang and Koh Thum, the Communist Party of Kampuchea, the Vietnam Labour would like to create their, this uh, Chinese Federation. Therefore, the committee for the army, which was assigned and which assigned Kisampon as the head, 
was just a picture, an image to show to the world. But Pol Pot, he himself controlled the army from the beginning. So the creation of the armed forces was started that way. That's what my understanding is for your honors. Uh, the president, the tra chamber will adjourn for 20 minutes until a uh, quarter to 11. We will resume. Some Jane Crown child. Stand up. The craft here, please be seated. The President. By the different councils, please rest. a petit problem. Problem that I would like us to solve. The interpreters have trouble translating, and uh, the French speakers as well as the English speakers have a hard time understanding everything that is being said. And I requested uh, the accused to speak more slowly and to have make pauses. But I think that it would be useful th that uh, the interpreter from Khmer to English also make it known when he has a problem. Because uh, otherwise uh, the translation uh, at the end of the line is not correct. So therefore we are are in a legal hearing, uh, and if the interpreter does not understand, well, please uh, make it known. And uh, the second request is, uh, uh, we're, is there a s technical system so that when uh, the accused uh, pronounces proper nouns, either place names or people names, so that the greffier, and in particular the uh, Khmer greffier, uh, can write them down immediately uh, uh, that we would then be able to see on our screens. And uh, we, would, uh, we would see them, of course, in, in uh, Latin characters, uh, uh, the Khmer uh, uh, nouns in Latin characters, so that we are sure that we understand properly what is being expressed. This is my request. It shouldn't be that difficult. Uh, the, so please, the Gref Cambodian Greffiers, could you please list on the screen uh, the proper nouns when they are pronounced, and then the accused would like at that moment to speak uh, more, uh, please speak a little bit more slowly so that uh, we can uh, uh, get uh, the proper names uh, properly. The President, the trial chamber, chamber acknowledged the request made by the Defense Council. And for the reasons concerning the, the graphia, the graphia also took note of the request. First, I would like to clarify that the accused, when responding to the question, Rest by the parties and the chamber itself. Please speak slowly. And secondly, 
Please speak in short phrases in order to facilitate the interpreting. And for other technical requests, the trial chamber will facilitate with the IT section and the image section in order to make these uh, proceedings smoother. Before we continue our questioning regarding the security office M13, the chamber would like to notify to other parties that the, if the parties has to make a, the, the submission or brief response in regarding the accused questionings by the interview by the UNHCR, Mr. Christophe Pesu, document D09. From 849, from 748 to 788, please do your submission not in excess of four pages in the Khmer language and two pages in the Khmer or the French version. And the deadline is the 4 p.m. of the 8th April 2009, if you wish to do so. For our next proceeding, I would like to invite Judge Lavange to continue the questioning. The co-prosecutor, the floor is yours, says the President. Sorry. The submission is no more than two pages for the French or the English version. For the Khmer versions, the limit is four pages. For the next proceeding, please judge Lavange if you have any questions for the accused. Judge Lavergne, so we're going to continue uh, with the historical context of uh, the creation of M13. You spoke to us about the coup d'etat. You spoke to us about uh, the uh, Prince Yanukovych's call on the population. You spoke about the Khmer Rouge forces. And you also specified that you were not a direct witness of, all, of a certain number of facts. In, in particular, you were not in the army back then. Were you part of the Khmer Rouge army or not? The accused. In December 1970, there was a committee for Sector 25. I was a political instructor at the military base at the time. I was not a, cadre, a leadership cadre for combat. In May 71, I noticed that the environment at that time was not a revolutionary one. It was a fighting amongst each other. So I went to the southwest. In summary, I was in the army, but I was a political instructor. Well, 
Est-ce que vous avez... Excuse me, uh, did you, uh, Judge Lavergne, did you uh, see any bombings and what kind of bombings uh, did you uh, witness? The accused. In sector 25, in Saang and Kothom areas, I saw the bombing from the aeroplanes, uh, it's called Sky Radar in Khmer. It was an ordinary uh, bomb and also a flame bomb. At that time, there were heavy artillery 105 from Tak Mau and Saang to the liberated area in Pretoch Market in Saang to the liberated zone. When I went to Om Leng, I did not see it. I saw ordinary bombs by the sky radar dropping on the villages and the firing from the airplanes to the ground nearby the vicinity of my base. And the B-52, I saw it in the sky when I lied down and uh, saw it. But it did not drop the bomb there. The B-52 dropped bombs near southwest once and near the special uh, southwest once. Judge Lavergne, I shall now come to your, the time when you joined the Communist Party. When did you become a full-fledged member of the Communist Party? Were you first a candidate? Did somebody introduce you to start with? How did it happen? The accused. I would like to clarify that in 1965-66, I joined an organization called Mass Population Movement. It's a CPK language, which is called the Focus Person. I do not know what is the equivalent to the foreign languages. I would like to clarify that this focal organization that I joined was almost equivalent to the Youth League of Cambodia, but because I already earned wages, I was asked to join that organization. Later, as I informed your honors, in October, in early October 67, one word told me that the party decided to let you join the party, but the induction was not able to do it at that place, but it, can be, it will be conducted in another place, in a remote area. And in the remote area, I met Kai Pok, the Secretary General of the old North Zone, and then I was inducted into the party as a candidate as a candidate of the party on the 25th of December 70. On the 5th of January, on the 25th of December 69, my, op my apology, Your Honours, I got confused with the dates. Let me speak again. I became a party member as a candidate on the 25th of December 67. 
It's 25th of December 1967. I was introduced as a party member candidate by Mr. Kai Pok, the secretary of the Old North Zone. On the 5th of January 68, I was arrested and detained in a prison. When I was in that big prison, it was led by Brother Tep Sien. Then I was introduced as a full right member on the 20th of May 69. May, sorry, on the 20th of July 69. Introduced by Tep Sien. This brother Tep Sien changed his name to Saw Sien later on. Brother Saw Sien was a permanent member of the National Assembly. He introduced me as a full right member on the 20th of July 1969. George Lavagne, you told us a while ago about your teachers. You said that they played an important role in your life. Did you get to know the Communist Party through your teachers? How did you get to know the Communist Party? The accused. I would like to clarify that first, my teacher, my official teacher, there were one or two of them who made me interest on the political movement. Mr. Kai Kumhut. And uh, my future teacher, Sun Sen, but I fully joined the politics due to the fact that the government arrested more than 10 progressive men, including Kai Kum Ho. And that's when I fully joined the movement together with other friends at the Pedagogical Institute, at the National Pedagogical Institute. It was where the training was conducted for the progressive men. At that time, I joined the movement with other friends, with Colsaron. Colsaron was a first, first promotion student from Kampong Thom. He was a Khmer literate uh, teacher trainer. Together with some of my old uh, friends from my village. So we stayed together. Tho. So the teachers, that's one side. But the decision to join the revolution movement is another side. The teachers who influenced me, only these two, but the biggest one was uh, Son Sen, who's, who was later on became my uh, superior. And those who joined the activities together with me was called Saron, Hu Yi, Eun Lon, alias Nat, the first S21 chairman at a later stage. We conducted the activities together. 